Hello and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 11th of June 2018 and the time has just gone 11.10 British Summer Time. Well, equity markets in Europe have certainly gotten off to a fairly decent start, uh, even though we had a fairly unproductive G7 meeting uh, in Quebec over the weekend. President Donald Trump stated that G7 members should have tariff-free trading with each other, and by that he really means other members of the G7 should cut their tariffs on U.S. imports. Uh, the American president even uh, threatened to actually stop trading with countries which have trade barriers for U.S. goods. Uh, that being said, traders have seemed to have shrugged this off. Um, traders are getting used to the way President Trump operates. He seems to kind of take a hard line uh, with his political opponents. Um, with, the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the means of actually getting a reaction or uh, a re retaliation or a compromise out of his political opponent. So for the time being, traders aren't, too, uh, aren't overly concerned uh, about the harsh words from the U.S. president. But the U.S. president is also uh, in, the, in the news again today uh, because later today he's going to meet with the North Korean leader, uh, Kim Jong-un, in Singapore. And it, it, this, this meeting will be a milestone in relations between in relations between the two countries and also for, for the wider Far East uh, in terms of ge geopolitics. Uh, so they're, they're the kind of major stories that, that's, that have been going on uh, over the past number of days. If you take a look now at the Week Ahead, uh, the Week Ahead article can be found on our website on, under the News and Analysis section. And let's run through some of the major events that are planned for the week ahead. So tomorrow on Tuesday, we have first half figures from Crest Nicholson, the British home, home, uh, home building company. Uh, tomorrow and Wednesday, we have some important economic data out of the United Kingdom. Uh, we have wages, we have unemployment and CPI. Uh, keep an eye out particularly on the wages component. Uh, in, in recent months, the average earnings uh, in the UK have been outpacing the inflation rate was obviously beneficial to the British consumer, and the more money the British consumer has in their pockets, they are more they are more likely to go out and actually spend it. So, the cooling of inflation in recent months has been met with a, with a, a pickup in earnings growth, which is obviously positive to see. Uh, on Wednesday, we have the Federal Reserve meeting. Uh, the U.S. Central Bank are widely expected to raise interest rates by 0.25 percent, but the press conference afterwards is going to be the the, the, the main focus of the meeting. Uh, there's not a spec that there's traders are still very much divided. Are we going to see a rate hike as well in in September and in December, or just a rate hike in December? Uh, so that the guidance that, that the U.S. Central Bank gives is going to be of, of major importance on Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening. Thursday, European Central Bank meeting. Uh, nothing, in, in, nothing is expected in relation to policy change, but once again, the guidance uh, is going to be key. Uh, last week, Jens Weidmann, um, a policymaker at the ECB, said it was plausible that the European Central Bank could wind down their stimulus package, their bond buying scheme this year. So traders are going to be listening out for any clues to future policy of the ECB. And on Thursday, we have uh, industrial production and retail sales figures from China. And on, also on Thursday here in the UK, we have a company called Majestic Wines have their full year figures out. So I'll take a look now uh, at a couple of the major markets. I'll start off with a few of the indices and then go through a couple of commodities and then on to some uh, a couple of major currency pairs. So just waiting for the, for the chart to load now. So as you can see here, the FTSE 100 is still very much in the upward trend. It had a, a very bullish run from late March up until late May, a couple of months. It has since pulled back a small bit since then. But while we remain north of this price area here, the low in May at 75.91, the outlook for the FTSE 100 is going to remain bullish. We're not too far away from the all-time high, which is, which is only created a few weeks ago. So continue to push on up. Should we continue to push on up from here? We could be looking heading towards 7,800 and then beyond that. Uh, the next video to keep an eye out for will be 7,900. Should we see a break south of, of this low here, um, this level here in, in late May at 7,591? An area for potential support that could come into play is this area here, 7,482. And a move south of that could bring this red line here into play, the truly moving average, which comes into play at 7,433. Take a look now at what's going on over in Germany. The DAX is also in fairly good shape, not as, as, as positive shape as the FTSE 100. So as you can see here, it's had a decent one from late March to, to May, like the FTSE 100, but once again, it shifted back down. 
and we see that once again we seem to be stuck within about a 200 point range either side of this red line here the 200 day moving average uh, so the FTSE one so the DAX here is broadly speaking trading in around the around the, its 200 day moving average which comes into play in around 12,753 so if you can continue to remain north of that uh, it's likely we could be looking at retesting 12,900 and then beyond that we'll be looking at potentially tr tr testing at the big psychological number of 13,000 I'm sure we go beyond that uh, the, the May high of um, 13,200 will be the new area to keep an eye out for uh, if you have a sizable break south of the trading moving average, keep an eye on 12,000 as, as, as an area for support. And if you have a sizable break below that, we could be looking at heading back down towards 12,400. Take a look now at what's going on with US equity markets to start off with the Dow Jones. US equity markets are in, are in fairly decent shape. Uh, we're expecting the Dow Jones to open up at, at a fresh multi month, multi month high once the cash, cash session gets underway. Uh, so as you can see here, we're looking at levels not seen since early March on the um, on the Dow Jones. As the market's been pushing higher here in recent sessions, we can see that it's managed to hold above this blue line here, the 50 moving average, and also the, this yellow line here, the 20 moving average, and we're looking at pony to open at multi-month highs. We can see a steady increase in the positive momentum looking at, at the MACD indicator. So as the market's pushing higher, momentum is gaining ground, momentum is with the buyer, so we can be more confident that this proper move is going to last. Next area to keep an eye out for the upside will, of course, be the early March high of 25,507. And should we go beyond that, we could be looking at the mid at the high of, of in mid February at 25,821. 25, Moves to the downside, may find support in this yellow line here, the 100 day moving average, which comes into play at 24,784. And also this, the blue line here, the 50-day moving average, which comes to play at 24,555. Notice how in recent, in recent, recent weeks, uh, both these two lines have acted as both support and resistance uh, in, in only a, a few weeks ago. And, and if the market has, if, it, if a moving average has provided support and or resistance recently, it makes it more likely to do again in the future. Take a look now at what's going on on the S&P 500. It's a fairly similar uh, looking chart in that it's also tipped to uh, once the cash session gets underway to be actually look to be looking at, at a multi-month high about a three-month high so as we can see here on the S&P 500 similar situation the, the, the high of, of today's session in the, in the futures market is is, uh, is is pointed to a high not seen since early March the market is clearly in a kind of coming up making a fairly decent upward trend in recent weeks as the market has been moving higher we can see a steady increase in positive momentum so the momentum is with the buyers, so it's likely that this upward move can last. So the next year to keep an eye for the upside uh, will be the March high of 2,800. Should we go beyond that, we could be looking towards 2,825, this area here, which has a lot of um, consolidation. And if we go beyond that, we'll be looking towards the well, the, old, the January high and the all-time high of 2,877. Moves to the downside, may find some support from this blue line here, the 50-day moving average. Which comes to play at 2,693. Once again, that does kind of support and resistance in um, in, re in recent months, so it makes it all the more likely that it will do so again. Take a look now at what's going on in the oil markets. First off, with Brent crude oil. So the oil market has been essentially been in a, in a solid upward trend uh, for about 12 months now. Uh, we have we have seen a slight cooling in the price of oil in, in recent weeks. So the big picture view, the kind of more medium to longer term view, is that this that is likely that this upper trend is going to continue. Um, it's been a very strong upper trend, like I said, for, for 12 months. Class example of higher highs and higher lows. So if the wider trend does continue and we continue to push on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting 78, 79, 80, and then up towards 81. But what's ever so slightly concerning um, is the fact that. In the last couple of weeks, we have seen a, a bit of a pullback, and this pullback might just be a correction, but it could also be the beginning of the, of the market edging lower because after hitting a you know, multi, uh, you know, 42 month high here uh, in May, the market then moved to move down, so creating a lower low, a lower high, and an, another lower low. So if we do, we, we would we would need to take out the 79 area 
uh, this, this candle here before we actually become more confident that the upper trend is going to continue because we already have a lower low, lower high, lower low. We could be looking at heading lower again. And if we do head lower, we could be looking at finding support in around 73.10 or perhaps $72 or maybe even down as low as 71. So just keep an eye out for that. If you take off this low here from the 5th of June, which comes into play um, in around 70, 73, 60 or so, in around there, we could be looking at heading lower in the near term. But like I said, for the big picture for the last 12 months has been very much the upside. So it's likely that the wider positive trend uh, will continue. It's a similar chart on WTI, although WTI has been a bit weaker uh, in comparison to Brent crude uh, in, in recent weeks. And, and the sell-off that we've seen recently has been a bit steep, has been a bit deeper um, in the terms of the move to the downside. So the big picture is it's very much in an upward trend uh, for the last year. But as you can see here, had a fairly sizable sell-off. It's gone below the 50-day moving average, gone, gone traded below the 100-day moving average on a number of occasions. We seem to be hovering in around this area here, in around the 100-day moving average, which comes into play at 65 spot 38. If you can hold north of the uh, the recent lows at 64 spot 18, it's likely that that market could look to actually push higher again and look at retesting 67 or to go north of the of the this blue line here, the 50-day moving average at 67 spot 86. We could be looking at heading back up towards 69, 70, so on and so forth. Move to the downside. If you take off this low here um, at 7, 64, so about 18, we could be looking at heading back down towards 63, or perhaps even the kind of the early April low of 61, spot 78. Take a look now. What's going on in the currency markets? Take a look at euro dollar and pound sterling. So after a fairly sizable sell-off, a fairly substantial sell-off, uh, the euro suffered against the US dollar in recent months. We have, we have seen, we, we, we witnessed a, a bounce back uh, in, in recent weeks. And so the market is pushing higher here. Positive momentum is increasing. So the momentum is, 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 is with the buyers and the market is, in the, at least in the near term, appeared to be pointing higher. But we would need to take out uh, the 118.30 to potentially look to actually move on further from here. A move north of that could take us up towards 119 or else 120 itself. And 120 not only is it a big psychological number, it's also in around where the 200 moving average comes into play. So it would mean it, it would be a, a, a additionally significant um, should, it, should it move north of that level. But if the market is, if this is just a temporary uh, pullback and we're looking for another leg, leg lower, should we move south uh, here again? We could be looking at testing. 116 one spot 16 17 and a move below that could bring us back back down, back down to one spot 15 10. as you've seen a bit of a broad us dollar sell-off recently it's a similar situation for the pound versus the uh, us dollar in that we had a fairly sizable sell-off in uh, in in april and in april and may and we have seen evidence uh, of some bit of a comeback but whether the market is just actually bouncing back and or it's actually it's actually going to be a turnaround or, to, or it's yet to be seen so after the fairly sizable sell-off here the market has been pushing lower uh since late may but it seemed to kind of run couldn't really get above the 134.50 area here and managed to actually drift back lower again so the question is whether this uh, this, this pullback uh, today uh is a breather before we actually take the next leg higher and look and look to actually retake look to test and potentially retake 134.50 and then beyond that head up towards the eternity moving average this red line here at 131 spot 35.95 or whether we're actually going to just drift lower again if we do drift lower again we could be really heading back down towards 133 there's quite a bit of consolidation in around that in recent weeks and if you go south of 133 we could be looking at, at re retesting the may lows of one spot 32.04 well that's all for me this week thank you very much